Tommy here with PSP at 14 Wing Greenwood. Today we're going to look at endurance training for soccer athletes. So the first thing we need to look at when we're in endurance training is how the energy systems in the body work. So we have three primary energy systems. They give us uh, ATP, which is our energy source when we're doing any sort of activity. So first we have our anaerobic alactic system. So that's our really short burst, things like a 10 second sprint, a vertical jump, a broad jump, anything that happens under 10 seconds. That's going to be anaerobic alactic, and that uses our phosphocreatine as our fuel source. Then we have our anaerobic lactic. So the easiest way to think about this is activities where you kind of feel like that burn in your legs, burn in your arms, whatever exercise you're doing. So that's 10 seconds to two minutes. So you're looking at something like a, like a middle distance sprint, maybe a 400 meter, 800 meter sprint. So that one, again, you're going to feel that burn you're not quite getting into an aerobic state, but it's gonna be a lot tougher, and gonna last a lot longer than something from our anaerobic alactic energy system. Then here we have our aerobic system, so that's anything longer than three minutes. So think like our aerobic athletes are like our uh, marathon runners, triathletes, anybody like that is doing things for a long period of time with repeated efforts. So that's gonna be separated into capacity and power. So capacity is really our long, slow distance. So again, that's our marathon runners, our triathletes, any distance swimmers. They would be in the aerobic capacity section. And then we have aerobic power. So that's a hard effort for around five to eight minutes. So we think if you're running a, a one kilometer or a two kilometer time trial, that's gonna be in that time range. That's our aerobic power. So we're not, it's still tough, but we're not in these energy systems here because we've got oxygen as our primary fuel source. So looking at soccer, we're going to see our, the energy systems that we use as our main focus here with soccer athletes. So when we look at soccer, our two main energy systems we use is our anaerobic alactic and our aerobic. So anaerobic alactic, again, that's our short burst. So some examples here, you have short sprints, short bursts. If you're challenging for the ball, you're sprinting up to the attacker. If you're the defender, you're trying to challenge them for the ball. If you're sprinting on a breakaway, if you're setting up for a throw-in, everybody's kind of in the same area. Before your team throws in, you've got to sprint, break away from the defender that's with you. Those are going to be our anaerobic alactic. And then we have our aerobic system. So that's for recovery between, between hard efforts and between plays. So the big thing here with the aerobic system is that's what refuels our anaerobic alactic system. So if we can be aerobically fit, then we're going to have a better chance to recover between those short breaks that we get in the game. So if I'm a soccer player and I've used up all my fuel from my anaerobic alactic system, but I have a really low level of aerobic fitness, I'm not gonna be able to refuel again. And then I'm gonna start to get into this anaerobic lactic state here, and I won't be able to recover between plays. If I get tired, I won't be able to perform in the game. So when we look at our aerobic, what that looks like is our jogging between hard efforts. So say we sprinted up, we got the ball, we pass it off to somebody else. Now we're kind of jogging, figuring out, strategizing, trying to see where you need to be for the next play. Or breaks between plays. Maybe there's a foul, there's a free kick, the ball is kicked out of bounds, you get that short break. So we need to be really aerobically fit so that we can recover and get this energy system back online before we go into the next play. Again, if we have a really low aerobic fitness, we're not gonna be able to get that recovery in between plays. But if our aerobic fitness is really high, then we can refuel this system, our anaerobic alactic system really well, and we're ready, we're prepared for the next play. So when we look at training our energy systems, we've got some different conditioning drills and then some more soccer specific drills that we can add into your training to try and make it a little bit more effective. So again, we're focusing on these two energy systems because these are our prime sources of energy during a soccer game. Again, so we have an anaerobic alactic, that's our short burst, and our aerobic capacity and our aerobic power. So when we look at our anaerobic alactic energy systems, we have our first exercise here that you can add to your, to your training program is repeat sprints. So with repeat sprints, we're going a short distance, just 20 meters. We have a one to five work to rest ratio. So that just means however long it takes you to sprint the 20 meters, then you're going five, five times as long as your rest. So the big thing we want to focus on here is staying in that anaerobic alactic energy system. So we never want to be out of breath. We don't really want to be tired. So a good way to track this is to time your sprints each time and make sure 
that were right around the same time each time. So we shouldn't see any big dips in our sprint. We should have enough time to recover. And a really easy way to, to track our breaks. So if we sprint 20 meters, a slow walk back to where you started it should be right around 25 to 30 seconds, which will give us that one to five work to rest ratio. Again, we're never trying to be tired when we're doing these. We wanna be able to perform at our highest level. So we're timing it, trying to maintain the same time each round. And then we go to, so the big, a big thing with conditioning in soccer is being able to do, do being able to change direction. So we can't just sprint only in a straight line, right? That's not what our sport looks like. If you're a soccer player, you need to be able to change direction and be conditioned at the same time. So a shuttle run gives us both. We get conditioning and change of direction. But to keep us in our anaerobic alactic state, we're staying with a short 50 meter shuttle run. So what this would look like, you're sprinting out to the 25 meter line, turning, sprinting back, and then to, to involve our aerobic recovery, we're gonna use a light jog as our rest. So when we're looking at our repeat sprints, we're resting, we're just standing, kind of walking around to recover, that way we're 100% again. But to kind of imitate soccer a little bit more with our shuttle run, we're gonna have a light jog as our rest. Here we're doing a one to three work to rest ratio. So however long it takes you, so say it takes you 10 seconds to complete your, your, 20, your 50 meter shuttle run, then you've got three times that, so you've got 30 seconds where you're doing a slow jog. So we're trying to imitate, you just went into a play, you had to work really hard for a few seconds, and now you're kind of setting up, strategizing, seeing where you need to be for the next play. Then we look at our aerobic capacity. So here we've got some, some strictly conditioning drills and then some that are actually you can do when you're playing soccer in small groups and small sided games. So first we're going to look at aerobic capacity. So again, like we talked about with our energy systems, this is more like our long, slow distance, really building up our endurance so we're able to recover between bouts of hard effort. So an easy way to fit this into your training, this is just all non-running activities. So anything like biking, rowing, swimming, and anywhere from 30 to 90 minutes. So right now, if you're maybe not feeling super comfortable going for a long time, just start at 30 minutes. You can even rotate maybe 10 minutes on each one. That way we're not kind of overtraining the same movement patterns. And then as you get a little bit fitter, just start to add, add more time as you go. And if you enjoy one of those more than the other, just kind of stick with that and push that a little bit further. So for our aerobic capacity, our soccer focused conditioning, we're gonna look at 8v8 or 5v5 games. So these are small sided games. This is going from anywhere from six to 30 minutes. So there's a pretty big range that we can use with a one minute rest in between rounds. So you're not really fully recovering, but we're kind of staying in that aerobic heart range. And we're going for one to eight rounds. So there's a big, big difference between the potential rounds here, and that would be based on how much time. So if you're doing 30 minute games, we don't want to go for a full eight rounds, but if we're doing six minute games, a little bit more realistic to get to eight rounds. And then we have for our aerobic power, this is going to be more of a one to one work to rest ratio. So it's going to be, it's going to be pretty tough for aerobic power. We're really holding that hard effort for an extended period of time. So one to one work to rest ratio just means however long I'm working, I'm resting for that same amount of time. So if I'm working for a minute, I'm gonna rest for a minute and then go back into it. So for our intervals, we're ranging anywhere from 15 seconds to five minutes. And again, it's a small sided game. So we're going four V four or three V three. And it's gonna be, yeah, 15 seconds to five minutes. So it's really up to you. And we're going four to eight rounds. So similar here, if we're going 15, we're only going 15 seconds at a time. So that's 15 seconds on, 15 off, and we're back in it. Then we would go to the higher end and hit eight rounds. But if we got five minutes, five minutes on, five minutes off, like that's a pretty hard, pretty long and pretty hard duration. Then we could go to our four rounds instead of that. So again, here we're hitting both of our, our key energy systems here for, for endurance with soccer. So just quickly to look over it, the big one is anaerobic alactic. That's our repeat sprints, our really hard efforts. And then our aerobic capacity and power. This is what allows us to refuel our energy system here. It allows us to get back and have the ability to go through those quick bursts, those hard efforts again. So if we can be fit aerobically, that gives us a chance to recover. So when we're jogging, trying to figure out where the next play is gonna be, maybe there's a break in the game, we're using that time to recover. We're not just gasping for breath, we know that we're gonna be able to recover and be prepared for the next burst, the next sprint, the next big defensive play.